Welcome back to Media Week. Let's get a check now on the media sector's performance on the share market this week. We're joined by Evan Lucas from IG. Evan, great to have your company there. Just want to talk about some reports in the AFR. We heard that Oak Tree Capital, not a seller of Nine Entertainment at the current share price. Talk us through it. Yeah, it's an interesting one coming out of the AFR. And it gets back to the idea that Oak Tree and also the other major private equity partner in there in, in Apollo are still holding on to the share price. They want it to actually be a little bit higher than it is. The rumour is around about 220, maybe even as much as 225. And considering Nine's come all the way back to basically the initial public offering at around about December last year, it does mean they're wanting to hold on and get a little bit more cash in terms of their deal. They obviously made most of their distressed debt turn into equity. So they do have a reason to, to exit. That's what the market believes. And that's what they're watching. So Nine has had a little bit of a, of a rough patch. It had a really, really good numbers in terms of it, its numbers in the current update. But uh, in all of that, it hasn't seen the share price reacting. And that's why at the moment we see Oak Tree and also Apollo still in the share. Mm, OK, what about Fairfax Media? It's interested in increasing a stake or even buying out mm -hmm. Metro Media. Yeah, it is. It already owns 50%, so that needs to be sort of put on there. And again, it's all about, you know, competing with probably realestate.com.au. It bought up over up in the ACT, and Metro Media is basically based here down in Melbourne and has a very big exposure to the biggest sort of and top-end housing market in Melbourne in the eastern suburbs. They are run by a former Fair, a Fairfax employee, and they do have three major positions on the board. So it does make sense that they'd integrate it. It is, you know, run by the head of domain, and that would also fit in quite nicely. So not so Price to hear that they paid 35 million to uh, 35 million to get in originally. It would be roughly the same equivalent price to take them off the table, and would again bolt in quite nicely with that domain package. Finally, Evan, we've heard news that APN um, Standard and Poor's has downgraded its debt credit mm -hmm. rating. What do you make of that? How yep. significant is that? Yeah, interesting, because the reason for it is that APN actually pulled out of doing a, a, a raising over in the US for around about $250 million, and that was just to basically, again, do what APN's been doing for the last couple of year, you know, months, basically the last year, in fact, is that bringing down debt, shoring up their capital and their balance sheet. So they've cancelled that commitment. They didn't believe that it was actually in their interest, and it didn't actually reach what they were after. So S&P see that they are now sort of in the, in the possibility of seeing some headwinds with regards to their uncertainties around their, their current debt levels and their financing needs. So they They've moved it from BB plus to BB. Not a huge move, but it is interesting considering how much movement AM, APN has been doing. The fact that they're spitting off NZ, we've obviously saw them in the last year move the Outback, uh, sorry, the, the Outlook place also off their books as well. So it's just a little bit of news they didn't probably need. But all in all, the story at APN still looks quite good. They are really sort of shoring up and consolidating where they currently sit. All right, Evan, always good to get your media analysis. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Evan Lucas there from IG. Back now to James Manning, editor and publisher of Media Week, our co-host. James, just on some other news, I guess, uh, from the week. A lot of speculation about the future of 10 Network and, I guess, past offers, takeover offers for 10. Yeah, look, people have been talking about this for a long time. It's interesting that it's starting to bubble to the surface and mm. getting written about, I guess, where it before it was just people discussing where 10 might go. Um, but for a, a long time, people have thought, yeah, look, the option would be News Corp. We, be involved somehow? Would it be News Corp? Would it be uh, 21st Century Fox? Or would it be Foxtel? And Foxtel was the name thrown up this week. In a private equity deal, they would have had a small shareholding there, but apparently it's not going to happen. So there doesn't seem to be any real urgency for uh, for people to move on 10 and, and take it to its next um, its next ownership phase. Is there they, any they talk happen. about why it wouldn't happen? About why the deal wouldn't go ahead? Um, no, look, I'm not sure. I mean, look, it's just one of so many possibilities. You yeah, know? exactly. I'm sure everybody canvasses, what if we did this, what if we did that? Yep. And, um, yeah, I think probably because if they had such a small shareholding mm. it, and, and so little say in the future of the business, was it worth getting involved? You know, I think if Foxtel was going to make a move, I don't know if the... Um, would they want to have more, more pull mm. when um, that's such a small shareholding? That could have something to do with it. Uh, speaking of News Corp, which we were obviously talking about a short time ago, it opened new London headquarters this week. Yeah, look, uh, Rupert Murdoch was there, uh, Lachlan was there, um, Robert Thompson, the chief executive, talked about the, uh, the Murdoch legacy and he, he referred to the you know the family the next generation are sort of poised to take over so that was that was interesting he's talking about that publicly um, yeah and it's, it's it's almost a fresh start if you like for News Corp in England they've gone through all the uh, the trials of course over the phone hacking all yeah. that sort of stuff they'd sort of like to push that behind and they've you know look we're a we're a, um, a, a newer company now a fresher company we have a you know better uh, policy about uh, stuff not happening again that occurred in the past so yeah it's um, it's, uh, it's a new step for them, I guess. And uh, we mentioned it earlier, but Fairfax Radio has done a big deal with Harvey Norman to do with cricket. Talk us through this one. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a 
cross-platform deal, if you like. So the um, Harvey Norman get naming rights and they'll be plastered all over the uh, Fairfax network of uh, news talk stations around Australia. But they'll also be appearing in the newspapers, so the City Morning Herald, the AH, and it's a, it's a, it's a good way for uh, Fairfax Radio to play, of course, because they can really utilise the other assets in the uh, Fairfax Media Group and uh, get, get financial benefits out of it. A lot of cricket this summer. Uh, England's going to be touring here in the lead up to the World Cup so there'll be some of that. India's going to be here, they'll be doing the, the big bash league so yeah, there'll be plenty of cricket on here. And Allure Media, Fairfax Media's um, media division, has invested $3 million in Bella Box. What's this deal all about? Yeah, look, you'll probably know about this stuff better than me, but <laughs> there's uh, a substantial business has been built about companies who sample beauty products to um, the potential audience, you mm. know, because you can take a magazine ad out for a new beauty product. You might buy, you know, Harper's Bazaar, Marie Claire, Vogue, stuff like that. Yep. But if you can sample some of those products to that audience as well, that, that's a, it's a big uh, attraction Is that for when you see it? Stuff? on the magazine, the little... Yeah, but there's a or... subscription thing. You can pay, like, um, $15 a month and you'll get sent out a box of new products, right? It, potentially or theoretically worth a lot more than that $15. Yeah. Um, Murray Claire are into it now. They've got, they use another company. Um, you can get a subscription to Murray Claire. You pay about 100 bucks a year and you get a box every month of new beauty products. So it's quite attractive to the... It's very attractive to the advertisers. I'm not sure how much of the audience is buying in because you're... I think if you're getting sampled those products, I think you should be almost getting them for free yeah, exactly. for your potential. But but there are people buying the stuff, so um, we'll see where it goes. Fair enough. Um, and Fairfax Media also launching Traveller.com.au. Yeah, it's been a very successful uh, category for them. That travel magazine. It's probably close to a decade that Saturday uh, section's been in the City Morning Herald, The Age. Uh, it's also run on a Sunday now in the uh, Sun Herald. Um, very well designed. It's a great, great, great little read if you on your weekend for your weekend papers. Gets a lot of good advertising. So now they've got a dedicated uh, digital space for it for all that. They've done a um, a uh, partnership with TripAdvisor, which everybody goes on holidays. Yeah. <laughs> they always hit TripAdvisor pretty hard to work. Read work those out. Reviews, where yep. they should be, yeah. So that I think that'll be very successful for them. Okay, talk us through um, the Emma Readership database because that's including some new data and readership numbers actually looking pretty good. Yeah, stuff from the Australian Bureau of Statistics uh, they've incorporated and also a, a, another one today they announced they're incorporating social media stats, so things like uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Makes sense. Yeah, 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 so absolutely. It just gives you a really full um, a full picture on the, um, the the total audience. Look, um, you know, and you talk about Emma, it's also, it's almost be careful what you wish for. Yeah. People used to say there was never enough data about newspaper readership now we seem to be drowning in it yeah. and the stuff comes out monthly and that month just goes by like that you know so by the time you've just sort of uh, digested one set of figures a new lot comes out but this and the, but the publishers take a new angle this month they were talking about the the number of younger readers they have so something like 14 plus Australians 14 plus 91 percent of them engage with uh, newspaper brands in some way, sort of a, in print, you know, really? online, mobile, yeah, so they've, they've got pretty good stats there. Um, EY, another sort of survey, looking at uh, media and entertainment profits, and they're looking good this year. Yeah, they are. This was largely looking at um, US companies, I think, but yep. some of them are sort of global, so there's sort of... Uh, is an impact around around different markets. 26% um, was the average profit uh, margin for, for media companies, which I think uh, most investors, uh, if you're a shareholder in a company, you probably think that was a pretty good return, pretty good. Uh, the, the most successful cable TV and gaming companies, uh, I won't say it's a dud, but the lowest one was the music sector. They were averaging about 11% return. So okay. uh, for people who are thinking the music business was all over a few years ago, <laughs> they're still in there. They're making some money. Still getting 11%. Um, now, Daily Mail, they've reported their digital ad revenues looking pretty good, but not quite yeah, making for, up for, for print. For, yeah, for Mail Online, they reported uh, just overnight in the UK, the Daily Mail group over there. Their annual results. Yeah, the the big mover was uh, the Mail Online digital revenues mm. up close to 59, uh, 50 percent. Yeah. I think it was 49 percent. So uh, people say it's off a reasonably low base. So they've still got a fair way to go, and it's still not a, um, making up for the losses in the print uh, advertising. But gee, if they can keep that momentum going, they've got a pretty good business. There. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a quick break here on Media Week. But coming up, we'll bring you the latest TV ratings. That's next. <laughs>